Hello everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Lucy. I'm going to be your trainer for today. And uh, today's topic for the webinar is goals and strategy. So um, for those of you who've never joined us before, I'm going to do a quick introduction to the webinar, to the tools we're going to use, and to myself. So I'm Lucy Karina. I use the pronouns she and her. I'm based in Budapest, uh, but I'm from the UK. And I've been a climate activist for the past 10 years. I started off as a youth climate activist um, with the UK Youth Climate Coalition and Young Friends of the Earth. And now I'm a regular old climate activist. Uh, I've worked for Friends of the Earth International and now I'm working at 350 as your online trainer for the climate strikes. So this webinar is goals and strategy. Uh, it's one of uh, three topics that we've been running over the last week, uh, a few weeks. The other topics are escalation and going big. Uh, we're running escalation webinars tomorrow, uh, but that's the last of it for this kind of series of webinars. So this is actually the last time that we are running this goals and strategy workshop. So, um, so welcome to our last ever goals and strategy webinar. Um, so uh, I need to take you through some of the Zoom tools that we'll be using today. So um, you will notice that you are already on mute and uh, there will be chances to come off mute during this call. But uh, for most of our communication, we're gonna be using the chat box. So some of you have already found the chat box, great. And you're typing in your introductions. So I'm inviting you all to open your chat books chat box now. Uh, you'll find it by, it's the little kind of speech bubble icon in your Zoom window. And just type in your name, uh, your age, your location, so we know uh, who we have here in our virtual room, if you're comfortable with that. And you can type into the chat box at any point during this webinar to communicate with me, to communicate with your fellow participants. Uh, just as a tip though, uh, make sure that when you're typing in there, you're typing to all panelists and attendees. So there's a little blue drop down menu in the chat box. You can change it to all panelists and attendees. And that means that everybody's going to be able to, to see your message, which is what we want. Um, so we'll also be using uh, during this webinar, a couple of other tools. So there's uh, raise hand. So there's going to be times when I ask people to share during this webinar to give an example, uh, to explain something. So if you're if you'd like to in this moment, you can raise your hand and we'll take you off mute and you can talk into your microphone. We also will be using uh, the question and answer box. So Q and A box. So that's really for any um, any questions that arise that you don't want them to get lost in the Zoom chat as it scrolls up. Uh, we'll try and answer all of these questions live if we can. Uh, if we can't, uh, then we'll try and make sure that we have time at the end of the webinar uh, to have a kind of question and answer session where we'll, we'll address your questions there. Uh, we're also going to be using the poll. Um, we're going to launch a poll during this webinar. You won't be able to see that yet um, in your Zoom window. That's something that's going to pop up on your screen when I launch it. Um, if you're joining via phone on a voice call, you won't be able to participate in the poll, but um, I'll talk you through it so you're still uh, in the loop. So um, I'm going to introduce our tech person today who is Nona. Nona, would you like to say hello? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nona. I'm based in Paris um, and I will be here to help you troubleshoot any problems that you have with Zoom. And um, while Lucy is doing the presentation, I will also try to answer any questions that you put in the Q&A. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Nona. And uh, just to let you know that we're recording this webinar and this is really uh, for you so that you have an opportunity to watch it back. If you don't catch everything, if you have to do something halfway through, uh, you have the opportunity to watch it back. Um, so let me just say hello to everybody. I think we have around 20 odd people on the call today. So uh, hello, uh, Mariam. Hello, Michael. Hi, Andrew. Uh, hi, Queen Esther. Uh, hi, Nicole. Hi, Tim. Hi, Hinal. 
uh, hi Aliu, uh, uh, hi uh, Priscilla, hi Indra, hi Emily, uh, good to see some familiar names there. Welcome back if this is uh, the second or third webinar that you're joining and if this is the first one then welcome to you. So what you're going to need for this webinar, um, it's handy if you have a piece of pen, a uh, piece of paper and a pen handy. Um, this is because there'll be a couple of tasks that I set during this webinar where I'll ask you to write something down, list something, that kind of thing. So make sure you have that to hand. Um, so the objectives for this webinar, first of all, by the end of this hour, we'll hopefully all be able to articulate what are our global, national and local goals. We'll also be able to finish this sentence, I'm joining the global climate strikes because at a global level, da, 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 at a national level, at a local level. And this is so that we can, we can explain to people, if people are interested in joining, we can make it, you know, we can motivate other people to join us. So I know that for many of you, maybe the goals of your strike might already be set, maybe at the national level, for example. The aim of, the, of this webinar is really to enable you to articulate these goals, to kind of use them as a motivational force for the purposes of movement building, not so much for the purposes of measuring progress as we do with some goals. So by the, the end of this training, you're going to have a sheet of paper that hopefully looks a little bit like this. And just to remind you that this webinar is designed to be interactive. So there are certain tasks and questions that I'll be asking during the webinar. I'm inviting you to take responsibility for your learning, engage with the questions as much as you can, and you'll enjoy it a lot more that way anyway. So what we're going to go through today uh, first of all, we're going to talk about why we're mobilizing and why it's important to know our goals and strategy. Then we're going to be talking about what we hope that the global climate strike is going to achieve at the local, global, national level. And then we're going to move on to making a plan of action together. And hopefully at the end, uh, we're going to have time so that I can run you through some of the resources that are available to you. And we can have a kind of question and answer session as well. So we always kick off these trainings with a poll and uh, let me just launch the poll for you. So again, if you are joining via phone, you might not be able to see this up on your screen. Uh, but if you're joining online, uh, hopefully you will have just seen this poll pop up like magic and you're invited to start filling that out as soon as you can. And so this is really for, it's, it's, it's for me really to see, you know, who is on this call, um, what's the kind of level of experience of people here, who's already connected up to the movement, that kind of thing. So the questions are, have you been involved in a climate action event before? And your options are, no, this will be my first time, or I've participated maybe once before, a couple of times before, or I'm a regular activist. And the other question is, are you connected with other local activists? So either, yes, I'm involved in a local climate group, or there's a group locally, but I'm not involved yet, or there isn't a, a, a local action group, but I want to start one. Um, or some of you might be willing to organize for the strikes, but not interested in being part of a group. That's also an option there. So um, I think everybody's voted. Wow, that's a first. Everybody's done it. I'm going to share the results with you. I didn't even have to do a countdown to prompt you. Amazing. Okay, great. So, um, so it looks like a lot of people on this call. It's your first time taking action. Oh, wow. We have some incredible uh, percentages here in these poll results. I'm not sure what, what happened there, but we have 105% people apparently <laughs> already involved in the local climate action group. I'm thinking maybe that's not quite accurate, but let's run with it. So a lot of people here, it's your first time taking action. A special welcome to you. That's incredibly exciting. Um, and we have some regular activists here and some people who've already done a climate action before as well. So a bit of a mix. And most of you are already connected up. 105% of you apparently are connected up, which is quite impressive. Um, and a few of you not yet involved, but yeah, that the, the, the key word there being yet. 
So uh, thanks for participating in that poll. And uh, I'm going to start off um, by asking you a question. I want you to, I'm going to invite you to think back to that first time that you heard about September's global climate strike. And I want you to say maybe in one word, maybe in a few words, how did you feel when you heard about the global climate strike? Did you feel empowered? Did you feel excited, skeptical? Uh, did you decide right away that you wanted to join? Did you need to be convinced? So please type into the chat, how did you feel when you heard about this upcoming global climate strike? And you can be honest here as well. So he now says excited, Zara too. Everybody seems excited so far. Uh, hoping to start a green group. So lots of positivity here. I like it. But also it's okay if you <laughs> if you needed some uh, some convincing as well. Great. Wow, decided to go to NYC to see Greta on the 20th. Inspired and impressed with the courage of young people. Happy, no need to be convinced, immediately got immensely excited. Okay, real positivity here. Great, because so, so the key thing here, I think, you know, we've had a lot of different responses over these last weeks. Some people did need to be convinced, right? Okay, so Priscilla's saying I needed to be convinced at first because where I live, there is zero, zero information about the climate strike, right? So to be honest, you know, uh, Priscilla, I kind of, I kind of felt the same. I didn't necessarily need convincing, uh, but you know, as somebody who's been part of the movement for a long time, I, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of big mobilizations, and you know, I needed convincing to that, you know, uh, that this was going to be one that was going to be really impactful. And I think the key thing here is that people usually do join an action or something that they care about. Um, not just it's not really enough to care about the issue they also need to know that what they're what they're going to do is going to make a difference right so these climate strikes we know they're not going to solve the climate crisis alone but what this moment can do is demonstrate that people are no longer willing to continue with business as usual right so the urgency of the climate crisis does require this kind of new approach and we know that the strikes are going to make a difference because they already have. Because look at the, the results of the last few months of school strikes. So now in this webinar, we're going we're gonna to sort of learn how we can communicate exactly what we want to achieve and to use that as motivation for other people to join us. So I'm going to invite you, we're going to do a bit of a brainstorm, right? Um, and I'm going to invite you to type into the chat um, what do you think are the goals of the school strikes movement so what have you heard what kind of slogans what demands what do they aim to do so type into the chat box what you think of these goals this isn't a test it's really at the very top level what do they want what are they trying to achieve get world leaders to acknowledge, yeah. Encourage global leaders to take action. So we're looking for action on climate change. Uh, politics in line with the Paris Agreement or yeah, in line with what the science is demanding. Demand world governments to take action. Get the media to finally acknowledge the imminent threat of runaway climate change. Yeah, so, so kind of words that I've heard are like, wake up, yeah, wake up to the science um getting climate change on the agenda making it a priority absolutely um green new deal i've had i've had calls for a green new deal um yeah acknowledge the truth so listen to the truth keep fossil fuels in the ground yeah system change not climate change yeah these really kind of big ambitious asks right um yeah so listen to the science the facts exactly mariam just transition, climate justice for everybody. Yeah, okay, unite behind the science. Okay, so yeah, so I think th these are all fantastic. So yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, Nona, for, 
for writing these down um, as they're coming in. Yeah, people who are most affected at the forefront of the solutions. That's, that's what I've heard as well, impacted peoples, justice for impacted peoples, and listening to their voices, absolutely. So, so thank you. So, so these are definitely some of the, some of the top line kind of demands that I've asked, uh, that I've seen. Um, here's some other ones that we've, we've kind of crowdsourced from these webinars as well. You know, we've heard people saying that, you know, the, the school strikers are saying, listen to the science, yeah, wake up to the emergency, no more fossil fuels, radical shift, system change. So all of those things that you just listed, definitely. So uh, my kind of follow up question then is what do you notice anything about these goals as goals? You know, do they do they have anything in common? I'm curious to know if you notice any any observations that you have about these goals. So you can type into the chat. Yeah, encourage this in action. Yeah, they require a big power shift, right? So these are ambitious goals, right? These are these are not these are not tinkering around the edges, right? These are really ambitious. Yeah, radical in a good way. I, I totally agree. So what I would say, what I would put to you is that these are movement building goals, right? So movement building goals are quite different to, for example, our smart specific measurable campaign goals that you might use in campaigning for example to track progress behind the scenes you may have this kind of detailed action plan with these kind of specific indicators and measurable aims and that kind of thing but you know one cri criteria of what we need is we do need these goals also for movement building so in that sense they need to be motivational so movement goal, movement building goals are goals which are, you know, so motivational that you can see the kind of tangible, visible, significant change that they will cause if we win. And so, you know, it takes time for a good process to decide on, you know, the, the kind of nitty gritty, the, the measurable aims and the time bound, you know, specifics. But what we need at this moment now is these movement building goals to galvanize and inspire people, goals that people can really rally behind. So some other criteria of movement building goals, what they also do, you know, they have the makings of a good story. So, you know, we can see this will be a journey. It's going to require a struggle, a shift in power. They also build on our resources that we already have. So our collective strengths, our experience and that kind of thing. They also kind of allow everybody in the movement to be part of deciding, you know, the, the direction. So they allow people in the movement to be, to be creative and autonomous. They're more kind of decentralized in that sense, but also they're kind of contagious. So the idea is that, you know, people hear them and they're going to be inspired and they're going to want to adopt them as their goals as well. So I have a little test for you. And I want to know if anybody here recognizes this famous chant from used in many movements, but used in the climate movement, especially. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to type into the chat if you can complete this chant. What do we want? When do we want it? Ah, oh, you know, you got in there. So climate justice now, climate action now. Yeah. What do we want? Climate justice. When do we want it? Now. Many of you might know that that chant. It might be that, you know, um, this is used by many movements. So, you know, you might have heard what do we want? Gender justice. When do we want it now? That kind of thing. Action 30 years ago. Yeah, that should really be what it is, Michael. Um, yeah, 10 years ago too. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is, yeah, so, so that's exactly it. So you could call this like a mo like a movement building goal, you know, climate justice now it's it's it's, you know, it's motivational. It's catchy. It's telling a story. So here's an alternative answer to this. What do we want? 
a 60% reduction in the number of private vehicles on the road alongside a mix of low carbon energies in our grid leading to a managed and realistic phase out of fossil fuels over the next few decades so that we can eventually achieve net zero emissions, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. When do we want it? By 2100 or 2050 for industrialised countries, if possible. So my question is, is this a movement building goal, yes or no? I'm feeling like maybe I made this too obvious. <laughs> no, uh, Daniel says, oh yes, it is. I'm really interested to hear why you think that maybe Daniel. Yeah, it's more getting into the nitty gritty, right? So, so if we're, you know, if somebody asks you why, you know, what do you want to achieve with the global climate strike and you give them this answer, it's likely that they're probably not going to be very motivated by it. They're probably not going to be very inspired. You can't really sense what kind of change it's going to lead to. Um, so there's a number of reasons why it's not, it's not a movement building goal. It might be a goal, but it's not a movement building goal. So I think that we passed the test uh, there. So the key here is that, you know, to build the movement, yes, we need these movement building, these motivational goals to get people on board. That's the, that's the job of these goals, right? But we also need believable strategies. So the ambition of these two things really needs to match up. If we have these kind of really big, ambitious, boundary pushing goals, but, you know, with, you know, the measures that we are taking aren't going to really add up to that, then people aren't really going to join us in doing those actions because they're going to, you know, they're not going to see the point in, 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 in giving their time and their energy. So if we have an ambitious goal, we do need an ambitious strategy. In the escalation webinar, we asked the question, what if Greta hadn't been on strike? What if she'd taken action on a Saturday? And the kind of conclusion is it probably wouldn't have been so effective. So with a movement building goal plus a believable strategy to get you there, you can scale up participation in your tactics. So when you can explain this movement building goal and your strategy to people, they should want to join in. And this leads to more people participating, which means more people power, more likelihood of achieving your goal. So if we choose just one of those kind of school strikers goals, which is, you know, people wake up to the emergency, we can see how their strategy, which is made up of tactics such as striking from school, cooling this global strike, how that can disrupt systems, can create a new normal, can shift public perception about climate change and the crisis we face. So I'm going to talk about global goals and why we set them. And one reason here is global solidarity, right? We know that by taking action all over the world, we're connecting communities in solidarity. And on the one hand, this is very important because it's important to know that your town's efforts are part of a global movement, right? And at the same time, it's also important to show solidarity with those most affected by the climate crisis who've been fighting for a long time, sometimes in very difficult circumstances. So another reason to set a global goal is to open and shift the Overton window. So I wonder if anybody here has heard of the Overton window and knows what it is and wants to explain it to us. If you have, maybe raise your hand and you can explain it into the mic. I can take you off mute. Or if you're not happy with that, you can also type it into the chat. No pressure here. Okay. Okay, so some people haven't heard about it. So I can explain it now, um, unless anybody knows about it. So the Overton window, it's basically the, the, the concept of the range of ideas which are tolerated and accepted in public conversation. So it's also known, yeah, absolutely, Timothy. So it's the scope of acceptable ideas that can be discussed by serious people, so by decision makers. You know, it's those kind of, uh, it's the ideas which are considered to be 
politically feasible or politically viable. They all sit within the Overton window. So ideas without, you know, outside of the Overton window are often, you know, considered to be radical, unthinkable, unacceptable, that kind of thing. And the Overton window isn't static. It, it shifts and it moves with, with sort of public, the public narrative and the public conversation. And what we want to do is to shift the Overton window so that more ambitious action is acceptable at all levels. So at the global level, the national and the local level. And actually we've already done that for many, many of our climate goals. So for example, there was a time maybe 10 or 15 years ago when fossil fuels were considered widely to be a good investment. And it was only just becoming widely accepted in the mainstream that climate change, you know, human induced climate change is a real thing. And this is at a global level. And it was really only the most radical voices in the mo movement at this time who were calling for all fossil fuels to stay in the ground and for all energy to be renewable. So fast forward a few years, these demands become much more mainstream, right? And investing in fossil fuels started to be seen as a less kind of acceptable thing to do. So now opinions vary from country to country, obviously, but at a global level, it's much more widely accepted that we need to end fossil fuels and that humans are causing climate change. And on the other end of the scale, investing in fossil fuels is now seen as unacceptable, even a, rep a reputational and a financial risk for investors. So another example of this is that I've been going to the UN climate talks for the past few years and only a few years ago, it was really only those movements in the, from the global south and climate justice allies saying that a two degree temperature threshold was way too high. And they were calling for that threshold to be lowered to 1.5 degrees. And slowly that demand moved into the Overton window. So 1.5 degrees, eventually made it into the Paris Agreement and it's now widely considered as that upper limit that we must not breach. So this is really about, we set global goals also to shift that narrative, to shift the attitude towards climate change. So one of the key questions we'll be thinking about in the next few minutes is what's next? So what is the goal that science demands, that equity demands, that is so far seen to be too radical to be accepted right so we have some suggestions that we're going to go through and we're going to go through other global goals that kind of push the boundaries that enable us to open the overton window to highlight different ways to measure whether our goals are truly calling for the kind of system change that we need and one global goal that many in the movement are pushing is refugees welcome so we know that climate change is already causing a mass displacement of people that's set to continue, that's set to get to exacerbate. And right now, the idea of a world where people who are at risk can freely cross borders isn't taken seriously. But we need to shift that narrative too. We need to work on it. We need to make sure that people have the right to move, but also the right not to move, you know, that they have a, the right to, the, to a safe home in the first place, which is one of the reasons we're doing the climate strike and, and asking, calling for action right now. So I wonder if Nona, can you paste, there's, there's in the uh, agenda guide, there's a link um, in there. I wonder if you could paste it into the chat box for me. It's at slide 25. Um, because there are, some, uh, there are some groups that are already bringing this message to the global climate strike. So for example, one of the main events in London is a, um, an event, climate strike, uh, migrant justice. So, uh, so groups are already bringing this and, and bringing this as a kind of boundary pushing uh, global movement building goal um, to kind of make this more mainstream. So when we call for climate action that centers climate justice, we need to ask the question, does this goal address the root cause of the climate crisis? Who's going to bear the burden? of this action if this action is taken? Is it gonna be those who are historically responsible for causing climate change? Uh, we need to take care that the climate action doesn't place the burden 
of this transformation onto poor people or impacted peoples who have the least responsibility for causing the crisis in the first place. So I have another question. Has anybody ever heard the term sacrifice zones? Does anybody know what this means? And again, you can raise your hand if you've heard about it. That's okay if nobody knows. Oh, Brian knows. Brian, let's uh, let's uh, unmute you and see if you're able to explain sacrifice zones to us. So I'm just trying to unmute you. You might need to unmute yourself. Actually, click the microphone icon. Oh no, Mike. Oh dear. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I can explain uh, sacrifice zones then, um, but I'm sure your explanation would have been spot on as well. So we, we use the term sacrifice zones to refer to these kind of entire geographic areas which have been sacrificed or abandoned to bear the brunt of climate impacts or impacts of dirty energy, for example. The idea is it's, it's okay because it's happening over there kind of thing. And these zones are usually in the global south, usually areas populated by black and brown people, but also areas in the global north populated usually by poorer and indigenous folks as well. And the concept is that the lives and livelihoods of people in these zones are kind of given a different value, right? They're deemed not, not important. And we need to call this out for what it is. It's a form of racism and it's driven by this white supremacist attitude that are, and I'm speaking as a white presenter from Europe, that our convenience is worth sacrificing other people's lives and well-being. And the reason we're talking about sacrifice zones is that we'd argue that without that kind of worldview, that this is acceptable in certain places, we would never have allowed the climate crisis to progress to this point without the action that is demanded. So when we hear people say we're all in the same boat, it's kind of misleading, right? Because many of us are sheltered or will be sheltered from the worst effects of climate change. So an end to sacrifice zones. This means res respecting people's rights, respecting every part of our earth as part of an ecosystem. And just one more thing, you know, when we're putting together our goals, we need to make sure that what we're calling for isn't going to adversely impact on marginalized communities. So solidarity with impacted peoples also means recognizing that emergency responses could further racial injustice, for example. So for example, taking indigenous lands and rivers to build a massive hydro dam, uh, cracking down on migrants as a national security response. So just because we're in a state of emergency, it doesn't mean we can take action at any cost because who gets to decide that? Who gets to decide which sacrifices are worth it? It's gonna be the people who got us into this mess, right, in the first place. So we know, we know that there exist, you know, just and safe responses to the climate crisis. And that's what we need to be pushing for. So with these issues of kind of global solidarity in mind of boundary pushing global goals um, of movement building goals. I wanna set you the first kind of task, which is I'd like you to write down on your paper, uh, three movement building global goals that push the boundaries of what's possible. So I'm giving you two minutes, your two minutes has started now. If you do finish early, please do share in the chat or raise your hand if you'd like to share through the mic. And just to remind you, these don't need to be perfectly worded. These are just your initial ideas. So don't worry too much about getting it perfect.
Okay, so hopefully by now you all have maybe a couple of global goals, maybe three global goals. Um, so those are, those are for you. You can share them into the chat if you like. Um, but we're going to move on now and talk about national goals. Um, so our national goals are going to have the same purposes as global goals, right? For example, opening the Overton window, shifting the narrative, making sure our country is acting in a way that is equitable, a way that's just. There might be one difference though, and that's at the national level, there are specific decision makers, right, that we can target. There are politicians, there are the voters who choose politicians. There's also likely to be, you know, climate criminals that we can that we can uh, target as well. So big investment banks, uh, fossil fuel companies, for example. So one useful way of applying the Overton window to our national goals is like this, is to think about it like this, that politicians are like a balloon tied to a rock. If we swat at them, they may sway to the left or the right, but tied down, they can only go so far. Instead of batting at them, we should move the rock. So people's activated social values. When we move the rock, it automatically pulls all the politicians towards us without having to pressure each one separately. And that's from Strategy and Soul by Daniel Hunter. So this really helps us to kind of to, to, to see how we can approach our national goals, right? So some examples of national goals that do this, that kind of move the rock, are movement building, inspiring, but slightly more focused to the kind of national context, are climate emergency declarations, like I just mentioned, uh, a Green New Deal, uh, no fossil fuels, so banning fossil fuels, keeping them in the ground, uh, supporting migrants, funding a just transition, respecting indigenous sovereignty, uh, banning commercial deforestation, rewilding, etc. that kind of thing. So then for your next task, I'd really like you to think about your uh, national, uh, national context. So what is the national call for climate action where you are? So it might already be that these, you know, these are already decided, but I'd like you to, again, write down on your paper three national goals. So they can either be existing ones or ones that you've made up. Um, three national goals that pu push the boundaries are, are motivational and movement building, but maybe slightly, slightly more specific to your national context. So I'm giving you a couple of minutes. And again, if you finish early, please do type into the chat your goals. And in the meantime, I'm gonna read your global goals. Okay. Ha, Green New Deal, yes. So Zara, where are you based? Are you in Canada? I know that that's a big push um, in Canada right now for a Green New Deal. Yes, yeah, stop land degradation, fantastic. Um, Increase renewables, switch to EVs, uh, electric vehicles, yep. Respect rights of tribals and forest, forest dwellers, fantastic. Urban forests, restoring mangrove belts. Okay, zero waste, reforestation, yep. Um, okay, national climate curriculum. Yeah, this is, that's a really good example of something you can do at the national level. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, these are fantastic. Cool. So it looks like you've all got the hang of your national goals. So hopefully you've all got 
three national goals that you're happy with. Maybe they can be tweaked a bit, but maybe you're, you're pretty happy about them. Okay. So the next thing I was going to ask you to do is to type just one of them into the chat, but it looks like everybody's written a few. So maybe, no, no, we can, we can capture some of these into the, into the slide. So I see, I see a few calls for Green New Deal. I see a few calls for uh, like land reform or agriculture reform. Um, lots of calls to respect indigenous rights, stop pushing uh, fossil fuel infrastructure, end violence against indigenous peoples, uh, move to 100% renewables, yep, um, ending coal, uh, yeah, definitely things that can that can be enacted right at the national level and and make sense. Yeah, rewilding, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Nona, for for noting these down, um, and your speedy typing. So um, as time is marching on, I'm just going to uh, move on. But thank you, Nona, for typing these out. Um, so just just to check back on those goals, right? So everything that you've written in your in your national in your national move, in your national goals, just a kind of checklist is you know is it a movement building goal? Can people rally behind it? Um, does it have those criteria of a movement building goal? Does it have a target? It might have a target. It might have you know certain actors who can enact that. Um, and also, does it have? Could it possibly have a negative impact on somebody? Okay, how do we make it more just? We don't mind if it has a negative impact on the fossil fuel industry, for example, but we do mind if it has a negative impact on poorer people or impacted peoples, right? So moving on to local goals, and this is my favorite part. Uh, so um, at the local level, we're all a member of a local community. And in fact, we're actually more likely to be a member of lots of different local communities. So, for example, I live in Budapest, so I'm a member of the community of the city of Budapest. Um, but I'm also in the 12th district, so that's another community that I'm a member of. Uh, my, my, the neighbours in my street and in my apartment building, we form a, a community, a smaller community, right? Um, I'm a, you know, you might be a community, might be, you know, those at your place of worship, right? Your school or your university is a community. Your workplace, your union, your kids' school, if you have kids, and the teachers and parents there. Um, you might be a member of the cycling community or the knitting community. So we're all a member of many, many different local communities. Uh, within our kind of, when we talk about local action, it can seem kind of abstract, right? But if we kind of break it down into our local communities, it feels a little bit more relevant to our lives. So my task for you is to list all of the communities that you feel that you're a part of at the local level. List those onto your piece of paper. I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds and see how we do. So I don't want you to list them in the chat yet, but just uh, just on your piece of paper. Okay, hopefully that everybody now has a list. So my next question is, how many communities did you count? So type that number into the chat. I'm curious. So this isn't a competition, by the way. If you have 20 or 30 communities, then you need to take a break. <laughs> so usually it's between like one and 10 or something like that. Yeah, that's okay if it's one. <laughs> Okay, a 
Okay, so you've all got your communities. You've all got at least one. That's a good start. Cool. So the next task is to choose one community that you could engage in the global climate strike. So of those that you've listed, which one of those do you think would be most likely to be interested in joining the global climate strike? So I hope everybody kind of has one in mind. So what I want you to do into the chat is to have a go at writing a local goal proposal that you can take to that community. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples because this might be a little bit abstract to you um, or it might seem a bit um, confusing at, at first. Um, so my examples are, first example, the community is me and all my fellow students at high school. And this is hypothetical because I'm not at high school. But uh, the idea, yeah, me and my fellow students at high school, our local goal could be that all public educational buildings in my local area should be 100% solar powered, right? So, you know, that's a goal that, that is relevant to that community, but it's also something that's within our power to change. And it's something inspiring that we can do to contribute to the global climate strike, to, to the climate movement in general. So another example is, you know, one of my communities, I'm a cyclist, so I'm a member of the cycling community in Budapest. So, you know, our goal could be space for cyclists on every road in the whole city, right? So this is, this, this, these are just examples, you know, other examples of local goals could be, you know, divestment uh, from, from, you know, public funds and pension funds from fossil fuels, planting trees, refusing permits for new fossil fuel development, declaring fossil free zones, that kind of thing. Um, so, so I'd like you to have a go at choosing that one community and thinking about a relevant local goal that you could enact as a community, as your contribution towards the climate movement. This one always takes a little bit more time as people, <laughs> people are thinking about it and typing in. So do type into the chat once you have your idea for your local community goal. Okay, Miriam, that's a really nice one. So all local or regional church buildings supplied by 100% renewable energy, yeah. I like that one because it's scalable, right? So you could start off with just your church building and make it a little case study, a little example. And then you could reach out to churches in your local area, in other parishes. You can, you can build it up so that it becomes even a national goal that all of these buildings we're committing, that they're going to be 100% renewable. So, uh, Niket, I wonder if you could repost yours, Niket, to all panelists and attendees, because I think only I can see, only I can see yours at the moment. Same with Emily, could you repost to all panelists and attendees? So Michael's is for the fitness and nutrition crowd. Okay, local scale system to capture organic waste streams and use for energy and compost. I think that's a fantastic goal, yeah. And think about how you can scale that up as well, right? So, you know, you could start in that local community, fitness and nutrition community, but I'm sure that you're also part of networks, you know, at the local level, at the regional or national level, that you can scale up. Uh, great, okay, mothers out front, getting local utilities to fix leaks in the gas pipeline system. Yeah, okay. Uh, energy waste is, you know, a huge contributor to climate change. 
um, my hometown community to wake up, actually wake up, raise awareness from the school, smaller scale. Okay, how can you turn that into a goal? What do you think could be your goal there, Priscilla? Like maybe that everybody in your hometown uh, is aware and that's your goal kind of thing. Yeah, safe and clean footpaths. Yeah, I think, Daniel, that's a really, you know, there's, there's, there are obviously reasons why people use their cars or, you know, don't want to walk places, and that could be one of them. So, yeah, safe, clean footpaths. 100% usage of tote bags or cloth bags. Complete ban of single-use plastic. Yeah, absolutely. And um, at what level, what community do you think that could be, Mariam? All local schools powered by 100% renewable energy. Yeah, like it. Make it proper waste management system. Rainwater harvesting, solar energy generation, great. Okay, green shipping, carpooling, yep. Community in my neighborhood, goal, free bus passes for everyone in the city. I really like that goal, I think it's great. Um, uh, Re-education, the use of papers, plastics, fantastic. So I think these are all really great local goals. Think about, you know, how, how is this relevant to this kind of specific community I'm in? How does this leverage our, our, our resources, our unique power? Um, and how can we make this into a story that could be replicated at scale, right? So um, I think as we're, as we're running out of time, uh, I'm gonna talk about how we're gonna put these kind of learnings into practice. So one thing that I would like you to do, and uh, for those of you who are new here, you might not know, but we have a Facebook group for all of you. So this was set up um, really for, for everybody who's taking part in these webinars and this training and everybody who's, you know, who's, who's organizing in the same way as you are towards the global climate strike. We've set up this kind of support supporting group where we'll post information, you can ask questions, you can uh, give advice or share learnings with your fellow participants. So thank you Nona. Nona just uh, put the link there into the Facebook group. Um, if you want to uh, click on that straight away you can, you can click request to join right away and after this webinar I will approve you as a member of the group. And we'd like you to just post in your goals in there for discussion, you know, um, and see what other people come up with as well. Another thing we'd like to challenge you to do is in the next three days, please discuss your proposed goals with, with people. Bring that kind of, you know, that local goal that you thought about for your school or for your church or for your local community. Talk to people about it, you know, talk to people about the climate strikes, tell them why you're doing this, tell them, you know, your global goal, your national goal, and show them how we can actually make a difference at the local level as well. And see if you can articulate together what are those goals, right? And use them for movement building. So I want to give you some resources to make sure you have the support that you need. Um, the first is the Global Climate Strike website. So hopefully you're familiar with this one already um, but i'm just drawing your attention to it because um just to let you know that the resources that were that that are up there on the on the page they're changing every day so there's always something new so for example even in the trainings that we have coming up um we're adding new trainings there's there's um i don't know if it's already been but there's uh no not yet there's a safety and risk planning training that's coming up uh tomorrow um, depending on where you are, you can double check the timing. If you actually click on the time here and it goes green, that takes you to a page where you can see what time that's going to be where you are. So it converts the time to your time. So uh, please do join that uh, safety and risk planning webinar. It's going to be really useful. There's also a live coverage skills web, uh, webinar that's coming up and media training so so you have all the tools that you need to be able to get the word out about your climate strike and also you know i like showing this just because it's my favorite thing here but there's an arts kit here please use it because it's fantastic there's artists from all over the world who have put together posters poster designs for you to use for free to promote your climate uh, your climate strike where you are they're in a, a bunch of different languages um and they're just really beautiful and free so so use them and share them 
Um, I also want to uh, let you know about uh, the climate resistance handbook. So um, this is where a lot of the concepts for these trainings have come from. Um, this free, completely free ebook came out in July with a forward by Greta Thunberg. It's by Daniel Hunter and it's super relevant to the climate strikes. It doesn't take long to read. You just scroll down and uh, choose to click on your, uh, to download your PDF. So uh, just trying to navigate back to, uh, I have way too many windows open, uh, back to there. So also, you know, if you have any questions uh, that we don't get around to answering now, do contact me at lucypkadena at 350.org. If you can't remember that, help at 350.org. But for the webinar stuff, do contact me. Um, let me just uh, type into the chat. Um, oh, I wonder, Nona, could you type my email address into the chat for people? And you will get an email after this, after this webinar where I'm going to uh, give you all of those links, um, the resources. I'm going to remind you to register for other topics and um, webinars. It's going to remind you of the Facebook group. Uh, so don't worry if you don't capture everything right now because we'll send it to you. And there's also going to be a survey that's going to pop up after this webinar. And it's optional, of course, um, but it will help us to monitor our progress in building this movement, building it to be powerful and diverse. So you can indicate if you've already completed the survey, you don't have to do it twice. So with all that, uh, I think we probably have time for maybe one or two questions. If there's any questions uh, relating to the content of this webinar that I can help with. Uh, I'm just going to check our Q&A box. We don't have anything in the Q&A box. So I wonder if anybody has any questions, if you'd like to raise your hand or you can type it into the chat. Oh, there is a question from Timothy. Okay, how does that relate to Strike With Us? So the so global climate strikes, uh, dot, dot net, globalclimatestrike.net is the website of the coalition of partners who are joining for the global climate strike on the 20th to the 27th of September. So it's quite, it's kind of particular to that. I believe that strikewithus.org, I believe that that's from uh, the school strikes movement. So that's, that's um, specific to them. That's their, that's their webpage. Um, just to let you know, they're completely synced up so um, we're working in partner with with uh, the school strikes movement to make sure that you know we're not duplicating anything they're completely synced up all of the events on the on strike with us are the same as the events on globalclimatestrike.net it's just that globalclimatestrike.net is involving lots of different partners specifically for this moment here uh, i think that there was a question in the q a um so Mariam's asking how to go about stories on climate change. Do you mean uh, where to go to for stories on climate change? Um, so uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what you mean, Mariam. Did you want to come on the mic and ask the question? In terms of go, where, where to go to for stories on climate change, um, I think at the moment and in the next uh, few moments, oh, Mariam, would you like to unmute yourself so that I answer the correct question? You might need to unmute yourself. So click on the microphone icon. Oh, I don't think we can hear you. I'm just going to make sure that I that I can answer you, though. Um, we have we've we've actually been uh, uh, publishing a lot of different uh, climate stories from all over the world in the lead up to to this global climate strike. If you go on Facebook, you'll see or any social media channel really. There's a bunch of different videos, and also on the globalclimatestrike.net website. Um, if you go to uh, let me just find it so globalclimatestrike.net. If you go to resources and you go to multimedia. Uh, multimedia hub um, and you scroll down in the multimedia hub there's there's loads of different case studies there's loads of um, videos and things that you can share of stories 
from people all over the world who are gearing up for the climate strikes. And I think it's got stories of impacted people, stories from school strikers, that kind of thing. Uh, now I'm getting tons of questions and I'm, I'm afraid we only have one minute left, so we're gonna have to wrap up. So if I haven't asked, answered your question, then please do post it into the, into the Facebook group or email it to me. Um, Hinal Rajani, um, the partners, there's a full partners list on the climatestrike.net website. So go to that website and there's a full list and it's broken down into region as well. So um, I'm really sorry, but we're gonna have to wrap up now, but I wanna say thank you very much everybody for joining. Thank you Nona for doing the tech. Um, and also thanks for being so engaged and participative um, during this webinar, uh, you've made it a real joy. And I hope I hear from you again. I hope to see you on um, another webinar, maybe tomorrow or next week. So uh, cheers, everybody. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.